The physical exam is probably one of the most important parts uh, of your uh, veterinary career that you will do. The, uh, we can divide this into many different parts. I think as you begin to get your signal within history, you should observe the cow from a distance. You should look for, uh, is she dirty? Is she clean? Is she up? Is she down? Does she show ataxia? Uh, is her hair coat smooth? Is it rough? Is the cow docile? Is she aggressive? Uh, you can tell all these things from a distance, even while you're getting the signal and the history. After you've examined the cow from a distance, you might uh, next look at the surroundings of the cow, although in this artificial environment you really can't see too much surroundings. Uh, look at things like bedding. Is there any discharge or any blood in the bedding? Is, um, do you see the manure? Can you see the character of the manure? Uh, what's it look like? Does she have diarrhea? Is she constipated? After you look at the surroundings, then I think it, uh, the cow deserves a closer look. Although you don't have to lay your hands on, we usually, you can start it anywhere on the cow. I like to start with the head, take a good close look at the head, check the, car the carriage of her ears, are her ears up or down, um, which may show depression. Uh, are her eyes bright, are they alert, are they sunken in, or are they, uh, do they show a very dull character? You might want to check the muzzle, look for any discharges around the nose, look for salivation, uh, to see if the cow has a head tilt from one side to the other, see if there are any uh, muscle fasciculations or twitching about the nose or face, all of which may an be an indication of disease. Then start back if you'll turn the cow so we can see her head and neck. I think that's good. You can check the cow's, uh, uh, is the head extended? Uh, you can see if there are any abnormal swellings. You can see here where many times you get swellings of lymph nodes. You can see possibly a jugular pulse. Uh, you can see how the cow's head is extended. Uh, moving a little further. You can check the chest and shoulders, check to see if the elbows are abducted. Uh, is there any abnormal swellings over the chest, especially in the area where the lymph nodes might be? When you're checking the head and neck and thorax, you can check for her character of respiration. Is she showing any dyspnea? Is she showing any difficulty in breathing? We can check her abdomen. You can see if there are any abnormal swellings or any distension of the abdomen from the side. We look at her feet and legs, especially the joints and the knee joints. Are there any swelling? Is she standing well on her feet and legs? Does she show any lameness? You can see that on this particular cow that the feet are, uh, the toes are slightly overgrown and slightly rolled out. Uh, this could cause a problem, not necessarily. We can look at the back legs to see if there are any swellings. Uh, does she show any skin lesions uh, where she might have been up or down or being laying down for a long period of time? Uh, also, from the side view, I think we should get a, a, uh, an idea of what the udder conformation is. We can see the udder. We can see how much swelling there is. We can look at the, the individual teats to see if there's any trauma to the teat ends. You can see if the udder is balanced. You can see if there are any abnormal swellings or anything that looks like a hernia or abscess along the, the uh, ventral side of the cow. You can check the perineal area, which would be the area from about here to the top of her tail. You can look at her tail. You can look at the bottom side of her tail for any, er, any evidence of discharges coming from the vulva. At the same time, you might open the part the lips of the vulva slightly to check the mucous membrane color to see if there is any anemia. You can uh, check to see also to see if there are any abnormal swellings, to see if there are any dirt or any feces stained ar around the perineal area that might show diarrhea. At the same time as we look down, we can check the back parts of the udder. We can check down in, the, down in the lower quarters and in the back quarters to see if there's any hardness, any swelling, see if there's any evidence of mastitis in the back teats. You can check the teats themselves uh, also from the back. Also from, from this view, I think we should get a view of the cow to check and see if there are any distensions in the abdomen. Um, this is a little difficult to show, but uh, a cow that may be distended, she may be distended on the right side, or on either side, the right side or the left side. 
It can be either high in this area on either side or low on either side. So we stand directly behind the cow. We can see if she is distended. We can tell if this is a high distension, is it a low distension. Does she have the appearance of an apple, in which case both sides would be dilated from the top, or what we call the, the, the shape of a pear, in which the top is rather uh, normal, but the, the bottom part may be extremely dilated, as you might see in a hydrops. After our initial part of our physical exam is finished, in which case you have observed a cow from a distance and you observed her a little bit closer, you most likely have not even laid a hand on the cow yet, we then uh, begin the true physical exam. I think the first uh, uh, part of our physical exam should include a temperature and pulse and respiration. I think the temperature, uh, sh the reason I believe that both, all three of these should be done first is to uh, assure that the cow, uh, uh, the temperature will not fluctuate as we do our uh, physical exam with, say, a nervous cow. So we can then uh, put the thermometer in. We've got a clip on the thermometer, so we won't lose it if, uh, if, if the thermometer would come out of the rectum. At, the, that, at this time now, we can begin our physical exam with a pulse and uh, respirations using a stethoscope going over the chest. We try to use some kind of a, uh, uh, a pattern to go over the chest. You can develop your own habit. Uh, I like to start high work back and listen to the, to the respirations, listen for the character and the sound of the respirations, uh, work down through the lung field in some kind of a uh, uh, systematic pattern, listening to uh, at each point for a period of time for uh, any abnormality in the respiration. Then I'll go on to the heart. The heart can be uh, best auscultated behind the elbow on the left side slide your stethoscope right underneath the elbow where you can listen to the heart. You can listen for any murmurs of the heart. You can listen to heart rate or any splashing sounds that may indicate hardware. The pulse on a cow can be taken in a number of areas. Uh, you may use, and many times we do use in the cow, the, uh, the, pulse, uh, the heart rate as a pulse rate, although it's not a true uh, pulse. Uh, the pulse can be taken in the tail. It can be taken um, at the time of rectal from the uh, posterior iliac arteries. Uh, there is a pulse that you can pick up down in the leg. You can also pick up the pulse along the jugular, uh, or excuse me, along the uh, uh, mandible. After the temperature, pulse, and respiration are completed, and we've got an idea of whether we've got a fever going on in this cow or not. We can, we've got our temperature, we know a little bit about the cow. The rest of the physical exam, I like to go as systemic as a systemic exam, going from system to system. As far as any order in which the uh, systems are uh, uh, examined, uh, it's pretty much up to the individual. Many times people will go to the affected system first. Uh, I don't think there's any particular reason we have to go to the affected system first but uh, many times it makes the client feel a little more at home, like you know where you're looking, you know what you're looking at. Um, we have already done part of our cardiovascular exam and part of our, our respiratory system. We have looked at the, we've listened to the chest, uh, we've listened to the heart, we've looked for any distension in the jugular veins that might be in this particular area. We've looked for any ventral edema that may, be, may accumulate down in the brisket that uh, may show a, uh, a particular heart lesion. Uh, as we move on back on this particular side, the next system that is very easy to evaluate would be the uh, digestive system. Um, we can get our fist tight down in the left side and feel for ruminations. I think when we feel for ruminations, the things that we want to be concerned with are rate, our character, are they strong or are they weak, and are they complete or incomplete. Uh, all of these things are, must be taken into account when you're doing a physical exam. Um, we can move on up to the head of the cow. Why don't we move the cow around just a little bit with the head? That's fine. I don't think the digestive system certainly can't be uh, uh, evaluated until we've looked at the teeth. Uh, 
other things that can be affected when we're affect be examined at the head is what we've alluded to previously in the nasal discharge that might go to the respiratory system. Uh, I believe to examine teeth, it's about as easy to grab the cow over her nose, grab her in the mouth itself, or possibly in the nose itself, then roll down the bottom lip and look at those teeth. These particular uh, teeth look very good. You can tell the age, of course, by the cow. This is a mature cow. She's at least four years old. Uh, you can see some feed grain along. We don't see any staining. We don't see any cracking of the teeth that may indicate that uh, she's had an exposure to fluorosis. Uh, those teeth look pretty healthy in this particular cow. Uh, if you want to look further back, you can, you can feel along the edge and feel the back teeth. Uh, feel what you've got going along the sides. I would suggest being rather careful because if you get your fingers between those arcades of teeth, you've got a pretty good bite. Uh, but you can feel on either side uh, the teeth and anything, it's a particular thing that's going on. Let's turn her back to, to the side. I think at this time we have done our exam on the cardiovascular system, the respiratory system, and part of the digestive system. The other part of the digestive system I don't think we want to leave out is the fact that we must auscultate and percuss for the, on the end of the digestive system for any abomasal problems, uh, primarily a displacement of the abomasal. Uh, you will primarily try to pick up a ping Most likely the ping in a, in a displacement will be in this particular area. So we put our stethoscope over that particular area and use percussion and use a very slow, hard uh, percussing uh, motion to listen for any abnormal sounds. You can move all the way around, move your stethoscope, do the same thing again. Uh, percuss the whole area. Uh, four pings or any abnormal sounds that may indicate a, a variety of problems. Simply because a cow has a ping on the left side certainly does not indicate uh, that she must have a DA. There are other pings that can cause a problem on the, on the left side, uh, such things as rumen pings and peritoneal gas in the abdomen. Uh, uh, and with a little bit of experience, you can pick these things up and differentiate between an a abomasal ping and, say, a rumen ping. As we approach a cow from the right side, some of the things that we're continually looking on in a digestive system is to go ahead and auscultate and percuss on the right side, very similar as we did on the left. Uh, I like to place my stethoscope in the paralumbar fossa, ping ahead and behind it for any pings that might indicate gas in a particular organ. Some of the organ systems that might be involved here would be abomasum on the right side of dilatation. Uh, possibly a cecum, possibly a spiral colon. There are many air causes of pings on the, on the right side as well as on the left. Uh, I then try to get the stethoscope down low, listen to any sounds of the intestines, uh, any borgerigamous, any movement or uh, noises that you hear, um, uh, and listen all over. At the same time, we can go to the, to the thorax and listen to the chest on the, on the right side, uh, also uh, uh, using the same pattern that you did on the left, uh, setting up a rather distinct pattern so you know where you are anatomically and can listen to the, to the right side of the chest. As you go along, you're listening for uh, any rails, any coughing uh, that you may elicit uh, uh, for moisture. Are they dry rails? Are they moist? I, don't, I also believe that uh, no respiratory examination is complete without listening to the trachea. 